Welcome back to the Scorecard Science. It's Tim and Jacko, and tell us what we've got today, Tim. Well, we're going to look at maybe the best back leave exercise that you're not doing, and it could be the missing link in your progression. So the back lever is all about connection. You've got to create a specific body position and you've got to be able to apply force in that position. Now the big thing is about when you can close the angle between the bar or rings and your hips. You've got to create this downward force. And if we can do that, we create the, the, the necessary positions to be able to shift the head slightly forward to counterbalance uh, the weight which we're going to experience when you start to shift the legs out behind us. So we're going to go through this exercise today with a couple of little variations on it that allow it to regress or progress to exactly the strength needs that you're at, because that's one of the most important things with these progressions, these exercises as well. If you do something that's too hard or too easy, you're not gonna uh, progress at the rate that you want it. So we're gonna pick this up, assuming that you can skin the cat. If you can't do that, you can jump back and have a look at our recent series that we've done on back lever basics, and it's also included in our free beginner's guide, which you can download from the website. So we're gonna start off there, and Jacko is actually gonna use a band. So we're gonna pick this up at a pull through exercise. So using the band is going to provide a little bit of support like a cradle. So he just loops it on the inside. So we've got this piece here, which when he skins the cat, he's just going to rest his hips onto that and it's going to give us a little bit of support, meaning we don't need as much muscle strength from the shoulder. So Jacko is going to sit himself through. He skins the cat around. When we finish the skin the cat movement, typically we're found in this rounded position here. Now to create a stable foundation from which we can move to the next progression, we've got to do this pull through exercise, which is starting to teach us to get the hands pulling down towards the hips and lifting the hips up so you flattens the spine out, making yourself nice and long and flat on the spinal position. This is the first point of starting to understand that hand to hip position, creating the tension that you need for the back lever. And when we can do that, we can then start to add a little bit more complexity into that position. In that pull through position, you can start to put some reps together, just let yourself slump back into that rounded shape and then extending the back out, creating the tension with the shoulders to pull the hands to hips. You can put some reps together. One of the really effective ways of building some strength in that position is just to hold it for about 10 seconds and put some time on the tension. That way just rack up four or five sets, 10 second holds. That's gonna to help to start you to develop some more strength in that back lever position. Now this, the third thing that you can do though is actually start, if you, when you start getting stronger, you're gonna feel like your hips are lifting up and that's a really effective progression that we can use. So Jacko drops into the skin the cat, he does his pull through. Now if he starts putting a decent amount of force down, you're gonna see his hips rise back up and he comes into this um, inverted hang position and he can send himself back down. And again, what you're doing is training yourself to close that angle between the hands and the hips. That's the position that we need to get to so we can actually create that foundation so we can extend the legs. The more strength we have here, the more force we're generating and then the more weight we can distribute behind the body as we start to extend the legs out. A really important thing for us at the School of Calisthenics is to make sure that we're giving you progressions and exercises that you can do regardless of how far you are into your calisthenics journey. The back lever is no different, so here's just a couple of extra tips which are going to help you to get started. And what was the first thing that we ever learned? And it is a really achievable calisthenics movement. So in this shape, we're starting to understand how to create that tension and create that foundation of which you can move from. We can use um, a thicker band if we want to, like this. So Jack has only gone for the red one because he's quite strong. But we could, if we were starting out, go for a nice big fat springy band. The other thing we can do is actually increase the amount of tension and support. So if we just make this band shorter, we get more support on the band as we go around. And the last little progression that we've got is actually as you get stronger, you're gonna feel that you can start to extend more weight behind you. So that just means taking one leg out or two legs or a straddle. So Jacko can give us a quick demonstration. You can still use the bands for these because it helps the neural connection of starting to learn the movement. But if he takes one leg out and pulls through into that position, we've just got this amount of weight that we're then adding to the, to the movement. Or we could actually throw a second leg out and he can kind of straddle, which makes it a little bit easier. Again, just playing around in this position with the length of the lever, where the weight distribution is. And we've all the time got options to make this exercise more difficult so that we can always train at a level where we're getting some adaptation, we're stimulating some overload, and doing those things is gonna help us to nail that back lever. So there you have it. One exercise that you're not doing that's gonna be perfect for your back lever. Um, and it's working all the time on that strength in total value and getting that hand down towards the hip and closing the angle of the shoulder. Remember, you've got the use of the band, which is you can make it a thicker band or a thinner band, or you can change the tension you use on that band, as well as changing those leg length positions to affect the lever legs. So if I was going to throw one exercise in, if I could skin the cat and I wanted to get that back lever, that is absolutely where I'd be spending my time. 
do loads of that, you're going to get your back lever before long. Yeah, if you need and want some more specific help and a program to follow, we've got the back lever uh, training guide for that as well, obviously, and that's there for you if you feel like you need it. So until next time, press dismissed.